and turns him over, Joe. It's over. Right away. Here's the snap to Brady. Fakes to Fournette. He throws. It's caught. It's in for the touchdown. Incredible. Tampa Bay takes it 60 yards. And the fourth quarter woes continue for the Rams. Well, good, good, good evening. Good evening. My name is Willie Lawson, and this is uh, the uh, the Morning Report, late edition, the election edition of the Morning Report. We appreciate you being here uh, with us today. Uh, it is. I'm going to do a little bit of um, going to do a little bit of election uh, resulting, <laughs> election resulting. If, if that's even a phrase, uh, I'm going to try to bring my our friend in. Uh, Paul Swanson, who's up in the um, ass into Canada, and um, see if he will, if, if he can join us. He may be able to join us, or he may be taking a nap. Who knows? Uh, we're recording we're recording this live, and um, it'll be out on video on all the major platforms as soon as we get done. So, if you're trying to jump on to um, to the Zoom, you're going to find out the Zoom is no longer active. Uh, but in any case, that was that is what's going on. Um, let's see, we may be able to. I don't know. I've not done this before, but what the heck? Um, it just depends on. Let's see. Let's not do that. We don't want. We don't want participants sharing their screen. Uh, we're going to. Um, do that and then maybe we'll send this out all right um in case again my name is willie lawson and this is fightbackmedia.com 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 we'll see if our friend paul um can join us um and if he can't that's fine that is perfectly okay um because we all got stuff to do Let's see if I can find my, um, I'm trying to find my window with my election results on it. There you go. All righty. I, you guys know, I hate, I guess, I don't want to be hyperbolic in this, but I do not like um, hyperbole. I don't, I didn't like red, wet, I don't, I didn't like the whole idea of it's going to be a red wave. Because there, frankly, there are too many opportunities for if it doesn't turn out to be this crushing thing, then it failed. Remember the blue wave? That was the blue trickle. Remember that? Yeah. Um, so a lot of times, uh, people in media, especially, start using these terms, and then the rest of you just go along with them. And I'm like, nah, it's probably not the best approach. Um, and so I don't know, I've not seen this red wave that, that, that we're talking about. There were, if something good happened in certain places, um, this evening, there was what we call, and what we do, the moving of the needle. And you're, you're thinking, what are you talking about, Willie? And I, and, I, and I'm not talking about moral victories because I don't just, you know, in politics and sports, there are no moral victories. There are only wins and losses. There are only wins and losses. Um, so I'm not talking about moral victories. What I'm talking about is that there are sometimes districts like, uh, and my 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 good my cord just went. Pff, pff. I hate cords. I hate wireless. <laughs> I I hate it. Anyway, so we're now using our webcam microphone. Hope the sound doesn't suck too much. But in case, <clears throat> like in my district where I live, um, is Kathy Castor is the um, <clears throat> the Democrat incumbent um, as represent as, as representative of the U.S. Uh, House, uh, and her opponent James Judge um, actually won forty six percent of the vote. Now, that had not been that high. It had been around 36, 38 uh, when Republicans actually <coughs> excuse me, decided to, to challenge for that seat, which they don't always do. 
I think they will next time too, because uh, it, that is a almost 10% increase over the last time that seat was challenged by a Republican. Um, normally Republicans get about 36, 38% um, in this district. And this time it was 46. That's what I call moving the needle. <clears throat> And I think that that's I think that that's important because we're, we're, so we so we start talking about other statewide elections. If you can start moving the needle, then you may not have to win everything, but you can start gaining momentum that way. And I think that that's an important thing. So congratulations to uh, Mr. Judge on his campaign. And um, I understand you worked your ass off and you lost, and that sucks. For sure, but the truth is that I live in that district that you that you ran in, and I never got a knock on my door by anybody. You were in a seventy thirty district, and there are let's see one two three four five Republicans on this block, only five, and that's and that's two households of the twenty households, and nobody came to visit. I'm not sure where you ran. Quite frankly, I'm I'm not sure where you ran, but I'm going to do a a precinct um, analysis, and I can tell you where you lost. I can tell you where you lost. Uh, that's what's going. So that's the kind of thing that's going on in my district. So, um, so this red wave that was supposed to materialize um, has not materialized. It just hasn't. Um, are things going well? Yes. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and try to get to it now. Sharing screens using Zoom is sketchy at best. Uh, let's see here if we can get to, how about that one? Screen one. There we are. Um, we can see down here, uh, and here are some Senate races, I believe. Let me see. I'm, I'm, I'm zooming in. I don't want to zoom. I want to go up, 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 up. Because the Senate results are the thing that's happening right now. Um, it looks like the Republicans are going to take the House. Um, but let's see what we got going in the Senate. Um, the red are obviously uh, where the Republicans are, are, are have won or, or are winning. Um, here up in North Dakota, we have John Hoven. Uh, 56 of four, 56 percent to 23 percent over Katarina, whatever Katarina last name was. Who, who cares? Uh, the Republican wins in North Dakota. Republican wins in South Dakota. A Dakota sweep, what they call it. Um, Ron Johnson in the Senate is holding on for dear life against uh, Mandalaya Barnes um, in Wisconsin. Uh, that's why I hope uh, we hear from our friend. Um, Paul Swanson. Um, in Iowa, we have Chuck Grassley, who was the incumbent over Michael Franks, I think, who was the singer. No, um, 53 to 44%, 55, and that's going to, that's probably going to, and that's with 58% of the vote. So that's probably going to be Grassley there. Let's move down to Kansas. Uh, we have Jerry Moran um, winning by 20 points handily. Uh, we have Eric Schmidt, oh, well over Trudy Bush in Oklahoma. It looks like there may be a runoff here. Not sure what the heck is happening um, in Oklahoma. There are actually two seats in Oklahoma. Not sure what's going on. Oh, I know. Both Senate seats are up in Oklahoma. Duh. Uh, both looking looking like the Republicans are going to win both of those seats. Arkansas, um, Don Bozeman is well ahead of Natalie James and has been called for Bozeman. Alabama, uh, Katie Britt. Uh, Kentucky, Rand Paul, handily over Charles Booker. In, in Indiana, Todd Young uh, over Thomas McDonald. Um, let's go to another race. Uh, North Carolina, Ted Budd is, is holding on for dear life there with 78% of the vote, 51 to 46. Uh, in South Carolina, it's Tim Scott winning handily. Tim Scott winning handily, 61.9% to 38.1%, um, and it's been declared the winner, uh, Georgia. We're going to talk about Georgia after we go to Florida. Florida Marco Rubio has been declared the winner, forty-seven, uh, with ninety-six percent of the vote the votes counted. 
57, 57.8% to 41% over Val Demings. Uh, let's get to the race everybody wants to know about. Uh, it is basically a dead heat. Herschel Walker is, and we just saw the update there, Herschel Walker with 73% of the vote is leading uh, Raphael Warnick, should be Raphael uh, Warlock, 49.1% uh, <laughs> to 48.9%. So that is razor thin. We can see how many votes that is. Uh, we're talking about 1,695,878 to 1,687,890. Um, so when somebody tells you that individual votes don't count, they are lying to you. They're just lying to you. Uh, out in Utah, we just don't have very much, only 1% um, of the votes counted at this point. Mike Lee, uh, the incumbent, is, is, doing, is doing well over Evan McCullen, who is the... Um, Who's an independent? He's a libertarian candidate, I believe. Evan McCollum is the libertarian candidate. Uh, in Arizona, Mark Kelly, the, the, the Democrat, is winning that race 58.1 uh, to 58% to, to 40% over Blake Masters. Um, and will probably win that with almost half the votes reporting. Let's go up to the Northeast. And the Northeast is where the Republicans were hoping to make a big jump, a big gain, but it doesn't seem like it's materializing. Um, let's start in New Hampshire. Um, I know it's New Hampshire who gives a, who, who gives a rest, but, but it's an election. Uh, Maggie Hassan, um, doing well over Donald Bolduck, uh, Bolduck, uh, at 54% to 43% with 40% of the vote. Uh, in Vermont, Peter Welch holds on to that seat handily by 40 points, um, with 56% of the vote in New York. Um, Charles Schultz, the cartoonist, no, he's dead, um, which would be perfect for New York. But anyway, uh, winning handily over Joe Pinion um, for a Senate seat. Um, the one that everyone's talking about is a Fetterman and Oz, uh, and Fetterman is leading by two points, almost two points exactly, um, with 64% of the vote um, in. Um, it's going to be an interesting thing. Uh, Connecticut. Uh, held on by John uh, by John von von Holland, I think his name is Chris von Holland. Uh, there you go. And let me make sure I get this in there. Over over Chris Chaffee by about forty points. He got to win over fifty eight percent of the vote in in Maryland. We had uh, we just did that. Connecticut. Uh, Richard Blumenthal. Uh, oh, e easily over Laura uh, Leora Levy. Levy. Um, that race has been called. And that's where we are now, my friends. In Ohio, J.D. Vance is um, right now beating Tim Ryan 53% to 46% with 86% 80 of, the, uh, of the votes in. And it looks like Tim Ryan is on his way out. Uh, and that'll be a gain by, uh, by the GOP. That's yet to be seen. Right now, you can see that we are at 40 to 41. Um, two other parties have two seats. Um, one, both, both of the, one of those is libertarian. Probably the other is um, Bernie Sanders, who's a Democrat. So there you go. Uh, and if, and, 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 I, and no one's mentioned this, even if one of these seats is a libertarian seat, that person will probably caucus with Republicans, giving them an advantage, if not an open advantage, but an advantage in um, in voting. So we'll see. Uh, let's move on. <clears throat> I'm still waiting for possibly my friend to to hop in, but he has chosen not to yet uh, because maybe he's busy. Because people get busy, and it is late. It is eleven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Let's go to the U.S. House races where it looks like um, the majority will be a 218, it's 218 seats. Um, <clears throat> there are 435 seats and, and 218 plus 218 is 246. <clears throat> so we'll see. So is it? Yeah. Eight, eight and eight is 16, 36, 236, 235 seats rather. Um, so we'll see what, so we'll see what happens. 
Uh, let's look at the map. Let's look. Let's go to the map, friends. Uh, the Democrats so far have lost three seats. Uh, other parties don't have any seats in this race. There are, are there any independents? Um, GOP has gained two seats. And right now, uh, as the elections are coming in, you can see uh, on the East Coast moving west, a lot of these elections have already happened. A lot of them have already been called. Let's look at my home state. My home state with my home people in it. Uh, Florida is red. It, you know, if, if you were wondering, uh, those of you who are thinking about moving, I know what you've heard, but if you're wondering if Florida was a red state or not, Let's look. Uh, Republican Party um, has 20 seats. So Republicans have 20 seats. Democrats have eight. Uh, so it is a red county. I mean, it is a red. It is a red state. There you go. It is a red state. Let's go. Let's see if we can look at Florida. Uh, what do we got going on here on, on the touch? Anything? No. All of these places won 20 seats. The blue is where Democrats won in Florida for, uh, for House districts. Let's move to Georgia. Georgia, except for, and this is what we have to start really understanding. Been, we've been saying this since 2012 um, when I did election coverage with, um, with the folks at Grass Fire Nation. Um, it is the population centers where we have to move the needle. And if we can move the needle in, in the population centers, we can we can assuage and, and make this a little easier. This is a bright blue area. This is Atlanta, Fulton County, those those areas. As you can see, the rest of the country leans red. Of the state of Georgia leans leans red. Um, this area, for some reason, uh, I think this is the university area. I think it's Athens and that area. Again, same thing. The same thing in a place like Alabama. Kind of, hard, kind of hard to understand. Alabama? Yes, Alabama. Birmingham, Huntsville, all these areas, bright red, I mean, deep red, bright blue, where the universities are. Here we go, Mississippi, same, same, sort, of, same sort of stuff. Same sort of stuff. There's no results in from this area yet, but Tupelo, Jackson, Biloxi, all, Mississippi, all red here's louisiana that's not blue that's water <laughs> all red let's go to texas there we go mostly red leans red but there are some border states here that are some border states some some border counties um border districts there that are blue that are still leaning blue so we'll we will see as we get a uh, take a deeper dive in some of these house races in a few let's go ahead and go to the governor's race governor races are, are, are around the country are are fun now i am of the mind that states should and can protect themselves against the madness that, that, all, that, that is the uh, U.S. government um, in a highly visible race that we all, that everybody wanted to know about. Uh, Ron DeSantis wins that race with 96% of the, um, of the vote reporting. And all the red places, including Miami-Dade, and Palm Beach County and Pinellas County, where um, Charlie Chris is from, all went to Ron DeSantis, except Orlando. Orlando in, in Florida is um, a little bit of New York, a little bit of, uh, of the New England states, as is Miami-Dade. Tallahassee is the state capital um, and where Andrew Gillum was mayor. Both of both large state universities are there. Both um, Florida State University uh, and all the things that go with government there, and Florida Agricultural, Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University. 
Ugh, I hate saying that, but but we 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 call it FAMU, right? Or FAM. Um, over in this other blue area here, that's Gainesville, Florida, where the University of Florida is. The University of Miami, of course, is here. So it makes sense that in these in these areas where there are a preponderance of universities, that a, a conservative Republican might not do very well. But if you look at but if you look at the colors here, it looks like he did a lot better than anybody thought they would do. Let's go to Georgia. Um, the <clears throat> the areas that we are saying that lean that lean Republican are all over the state. Atlanta, blue, Athens, where the University of Georgia is, um, this area here, Augusta, uh, 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 you know, and uh, Savannah, tourist areas, um, are sort of this kind of lean blue, but Georgia's a red state. And um, the go in the governor's race, um, Brian Kemp didn't have any problem beating Stacey Abrams, 54% to 45%. Uh, that race has been called, as far as I know. Uh, let's go to Florida uh, and see the very same thing. That race has been called 56.9% to 39.8%. Um, I don't know why somebody gets in and gets 30,000 votes. Um, Carmen Jimenez, I'm not sure why you do that. And Hector Ruiz, I'm not sure why you get in and get 18,000 votes in a statewide election. I'm not sure what you're hoping to accomplish. You would have to tell me. We'd have to sit down and have a conversation on what you were hoping to accomplish. All right, let's look uh, at some other states. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find, let's see, oh, Kansas. Kansas is a state where there may be some Democrat wins, you think? Kansas? Maybe. Uh, no, that's still Florida. Let me look. Kansas. There it is. Yes, Laura Kelly is in a battle right now with Derek Schmidt. 50.6% um, of the vote to 46.3% of the vote. Um, with, uh, let's see, how, with only 84%. So um, no one's called this race yet. It, it, it should be very, very interesting. Um, the, Iowa, the Iowa governor's race Let's make sure I get this correct. Yeah, ne negotiating the screen. Yeah, listen, if you guys want to, you know, want to give uh, a few dollars to get, uh, give me a touch screen for next time, that will be super cool. Uh, Kim Reynolds of the Republican Party right now, that race has been called in Iowa. 58% uh, to 39% for Deidre Dejar. Now, why, why Rick Stewart of the Repu of, of the Libertarian Party decided to get involved in this. He was no, he, he was really not a factor on either side, but I guess he's making a point. Uh, I don't know how many libertarian. Oh, oh, libertarians. Let's, let's talk about those. Let's, let's talk about our friends, the libertarians, for just a bit, because I think that's I, th I think that's an important conversation that obviously we're going to need to have in Illinois. Um, in Illinois, we look at the population center. The population in Illinois is obviously Chicago, right? Obviously, Chicago. Look at the rest of the state. Now, the gray places aren't reporting it. Peoria, uh, Chicago, population centers. So that and that works so well that we have to look at. Excuse me, have to look at. Oh, J.B. Prisker won again with 54 percent of the vote over Darren Bailey. Bailey with forty two percent of the vote. Uh -oh. So the idea is what is to get into these bright blue counties like Cook County and start doing some work there. Not just throw your hands up, not just double down on the places you're already winning, but get in there and get some work done. Why? Because if you can pull some of those percentage points away in the voter count, you, you stand a much better chance next time. And I think that that's how the, the approach should be. All right, we're gonna take a little break. Uh, we're gonna be back. Let me um, click on that. All right, I'm gonna take a little break. We're back with more of the program right after these messages.
All right, we're back. <clears throat> Thank you for um, taking some time with us as we get through these, uh, so, some of these more important races, or, or I don't know how, how important is the word, but more um, standout races that we talk about. Katie Hobbs and Carrie Lake um, in the gubernatorial race in Arizona. Now, before we go on, Arizona uh, has ex had experienced some abnormalities or some malfunctions, I guess is, is more correct term, um, in their voting machines in 60, 60 uh, election sites. Um, and Republicans had filed a motion with the judge to extend the voting hours because of the long lines. Um, so it's 10 o'clock um, their time. Well, that motion was summarily tossed out on its head. Um, there was a message from um, Donald Trump uh, to uh, Republicans, stay in line, don't get out of line, um, don't quit, don't, don't dump out because you know, you're, you've been in line for three hours or four hours, stay in line, vote. Um, now, I don't know how many people have not done that, but right now, as we sit here, the Katie Hobbs, the uh, Secretary of State, who's in charge of the elections, that doesn't seem quite right, does it? But anyway, she's leading um, Car Carrie Lake, the Republican, 56.9% uh, to 43.1% of the vote. That's uh, a, almost almost by 200,000 votes. Uh, with, uh, okay, I know you were going to ask me. Um, that's what 47% of the vote um, counted. Uh, and they weren't able... To, and, and again, the Republicans were unsuccessful in getting the the time for the elections uh, extended three, three more hours to account for the long lines. If if you are wondering why there are people who don't believe that everybody who's involved in this system is on the up and up and that every election is on the up and up. This is why. This is exactly why. That's why. All righty. Let's move to another race that everybody is talking about and been talking about is the Senate race in Georgia. The Senate race in Georgia. Um, let me get you over there. Boom, there we are. Are you there? Can you see it? Not yet. All right, cool. Now you can see it. All right. Um, we're back to the same thing, aren't we? We are back talking about population centers. Where right now... Make sure we get to the bottom of this. There we go. We have Herschel Walker, the Republican, leading uh, Raphael um, Warlock, uh, Warnick, the pro-choice pastor. Okay, I don't know. I don't know how you can be pro-choice and be a pastor, uh, except you can't. You can't. Leading, uh, Herschel Walker leading um, to Warlock, 49.3% to 48.7%. Um, that looks like that's going to go into a run out. Now, there's Chase Oliver, the Libertarian um, candidate, uh, in garnering about 70% of the vote. Now, that's probably a protest vote because they don't like, because there are people who don't like either of these people. Uh, and I'm guessing because, well, Warnick is a flaming leftist and, um, and supposedly a, 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 a religious figure. And that turns libertarians off. And then there's Social Walker, who is a, a proposed um, Christian and endorsed by Donald Trump. So that was enough to send at least 2% of the vote over to Chase Oliver. Uh, now, if, the, if he wasn't there, dividing that, I mean, would that 2% be divided up? Maybe those people of 70,000, maybe half of those people wouldn't even vote in this election. So there's no way to say that that made a difference because if you add the 2% to Warnick, you get 50.7. If you add the 
two percent to Herschel Walker, you get fifty one point three. Uh, there's no way to say that those seventy thousand people all vote for one or two of these guys. But there's the situation they're in right now, and it's probably too too early to call. This so will probably end up in a runoff, and that will absolutely suck. Um. Let's look at the Pennsylvania race again. Um, John Fetterman and uh, Mehmet Oz. Right now, that race is pretty close to. Uh, Fetterman has 49.4% of the vote, and Mehmet Oz has 48.2% of the vote. He's trailing by about a 1.2% of the vote. Um, which could be made possibly made up by Eric Ger Ger um, Gerhardt with 1.4 percent of the vote, and and Richard Bice with 8 percent of the vote, and da and Daniel Wasserman with 0.5 percent of the vote. The Keystone Party of Pennsylvania, the Green Party, Libertarian Party. So when people tell you that you know we need to get away from this two party system, we need to get away from this two party system. Well, this is evidence right here that there is a Democrat Party, uh, a Republican Party. And both of those names should be shortened, in my in my estimation, to the Democrat Party. I'm not sure what that is, and the Republic Party, uh, the, the Libertarian Party, the Green Party. You know, it's like the Green Party shows up at the last minute. Um, they don't go to practice. They don't. I mean, they barely have a uniform, and they want to be. Uh, they want to be quarterback and team captain and coach at the last minute. They want to be president. They want to be senators. Shut up, Green Party. Sit down. And the Keystone Party of Pennsylvania, whoever they are, managed to gain or, or garner 18,000 votes. Those three votes for, for Eric Gerhardt, Richard Weiss, and Daniel um, Wasserman were all protest votes. You know that and I know that. And you're not going to win with a protest vote. You're just going to um, shoo in the person that you didn't want to win. So right now, Mehmet Oz is is, is trailing uh, by one point one percent of the vote. But don't let them tell you that one that your vote doesn't count. Every single vote counts. Every single solitary vote counts. So make sure that you remember that. All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go to Georgia and see what's happening um, in Georgia right now with. Uh, this Warnick and uh, Ursula Walker. Walker is leading, still 49.2% to uh, Raphael Warnick, 48.8% uh, of the vote. Uh, let's see here. Um, back out to Arizona, because I, I, I want to come so many things before we go. I've got some local stuff I need to cover. Uh, let's see here. Uh, nah, 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 nah. Governors, there we go. Got to click on the right thing. Like everything else. Um, and the governor race in in Georgia, while we're here, we see that Brian Kemp uh, has not, that, that race has not been called. I'm not sure why. 85% of the precincts reporting, I'm not sure why that race hasn't been called, with Brian Kemp leading 53.9% to 45.4% of the vote. It seems like that race ought to be called by now, you would think, unless there's something in the mix. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that over the course of the evening. And let's run back out to the governor's race in Arizona to see if things are moving there at all before we say goodbye. 56.9 uh, to 43.1, no, things are not moving. Uh, and we have to wonder. We have to wonder why. All righty. That's where we are. It is 11.22 uh, p.m. here on the East Coast. And uh, we are going to bid you all the fun to do and catch you first thing in the morning um, with what's, what's happened overnight. Um, and uh, we've got... Uh, I've got a special piece that I want to do um, concerning the 2024 election because now we can start looking looking forward to, to the 2024 election. Now that for for the most part, the 2022 election, or at least our part in it, has come to an end. 
Hi again. My name is uh, my name is Willie Lawson. Do we see you again? Go out there and learn something. Love somebody. And for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We will see you when we see you. Bye bye now.